How did you cope with all these um, interview failures? Because I remember you failed four interviews before you passed the fifth one. Yeah. So how did you cope when you were failing those um, interviews? Did you okay, start giving um, up? Were you already thinking, ha, hmm, this journey is no longer for me again? Well, the truth is, you, um, the truth is, at a point, you almost give up. And it will look like the, um, the interview was just there to, you know, as a camouflage, but actually the, the, the NHS people actually knows maybe the candidates they want to pick. You know, you begin to have that thought, you begin to have that idea because you know, when you begin to fill two, three, four interviews, um, definitely you begin to lose hope. But as I said, um, not losing hope is the deal. And, you know, just be more deliberate and dedicated. So it's normal. We are human, so we should have that feelings. But trust me, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. So that's what actually kept me going. That No, um, definitely some people will pass this, so I should pass it. So it's just okay. to do better, huh? you know, have more opportunities to do more interviews and do better than the previous. So that's okay. that's just my experience about the interview stuff. Okay. But you know, you passed at the fifth interview. That, that fifth um, um, interview, what did you do that was different from what you have been doing? You know, the first one you failed, second, third, fourth you failed. What did you do different that made you pass the fifth interview that landed you this this job in UK. Okay, um, first and uh, foremost, I'll say what I did differently is that I noticed that NHS they like personal experience and a lot of exp explanation, scenario based one, meaning, um, for example, um, if they ask you um a question they don't just want you to give the answer for what i notice they want you to put yourself in the answer okay have you been able when you were in this case okay answer the question like you are in you know you've experienced this before or what you are actually going to do if you're actually in this don't just give the general question so, and especially when you have um, experience in that kind of, um, in, in a certain question in which you are asked, you know, elaborate more, give them examples, give them even the challenges you had, give them um, the way forward, you know, just explain, elaborate. Short. Let me say they enjoy, they enjoy you telling them stories, but it has to be realistic stories. Tell them everything, you know, make it look so real because trust me, the healthcare sector is about, is about practical. This is what they do. There is not a classroom where they go and teach patients that this is what you need to do to get well or something. These are practical actions in which healthcare assistants or healthcare professionals do to service users with your patients. So they want you to, um, they want you to be, they want you to answer the questions in a way that, yes, you've actually experienced or you can do this physically. So that's what I did different in the fifth interview. I was more elaborate. I answered the question deeply. I put myself in it, in the question, like, yes, this is what I was doing. This is what I would do and things like that. And I felt that was just, you know, the icing on the sugar compared to others, other interviews I've done. Mm, wow. Now, talking about um, the experience part, um, um, I, uh, okay, I am fully aware that you are not in the nursing line, but you have a healthcare experience. Many people usually say that um, it's only when you are in the nursing line that you can pass the NHS interview and all that. What do you have to say about that? Because I know you are not in the nursing line and your um, bachelor's degree, I think it was in physics or something like that. And I think your master's as well is not nursing, and you were still able to pass the interview. Okay, you know, um, 
um, casting stone. These are things if you want to be something you can be. And you know, in the in this modern life where you have modern facilities where you could be anything you want to be by just, you know, going online to study, you know, having your hands on so many materials, um, you know, um, going online to do some research and all of that. Yeah, and then so, care courses. Yes, and also trying to do courses because before you could do some courses, you will actually be taught, like but most of those healthcare courses. If you're not taught, then you'll be given materials to read. So once you read, you get tested on what you read. And what you are being tested on is what happened in, um, in real life. You understand? So these are things that happen in the healthcare sector. You'll be tested on that. And these are things that you've actually been taught via the courses or maybe the videos or anything. So... It doesn't determine on whether you're a nurse, you're a doctor, you're in the health sector. No, 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 no. Okay. So it's just learning and being being interviewed or being examined on what you have been, what you've learned. So that's just it. Mm. So um, how long did you wait to get your um, COS, that's um, your certificate of sponsorship? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. the that's that's the main part <laughs> that got us worried. <laughs> I think it was six yeah. months. It was almost six months, right? Yes. Yes. You know, I keep telling clients, start... I said, see, even if you pass your NHS interview today, don't expect that your COS will come immediately. Just budget sure? two to six months after passing your interview. For some to say is a lie, this and this. <laughs> that time because imagine when they tell you um you did not do well in the interview unfortunately you can't present you know it ends there she yeah you know that one has end you look fine but when you have been told you are successful mm. and you are not hearing anything for months mm. <laughs> even to take another interview that one you will not even want to do at all I remember you told me to keep applying for you that that you're tired yes. of waiting for this particular NHS. <laughs> I need to apply for you because you know you've had successful, you felt okay, let's progress. Okay, and they sent the offer letter, they sent everything. We sent exactly. the document, okay. right? Uh -huh. Everything was sent, the mail. So this <laughs> your reference, your tuberculosis chair, police clearance, all those. Mm -hmm. Document even the police clearance, mm -hmm. I think, um, it expired, right? Yeah, it expired mm -hmm. in the course of waiting because police clearance is for three months. For three months, and I, I, I got my um interview to review my, I mean, a mail, a meeting to review my interview to tell me I was successful. So, and that was, I think, September, and you know. Almost six months next year, the, the other year, February or so, that's when the series came out. So mm -hmm. that was six months. Ago. So it's a long time. But one thing is, if they have to, one thing I notice is if they tell you you're successful, they just just believe you that so they will exactly. call you one day. Exactly. Yeah, they will call you one day. So the, the only thing because, that can change is if a new law. Person. The only thing that can change is if a new law comes into effect. Maybe like like the new law that just came up on them. Um, I think is April four that um, NHS employers should should increase um, salary to minimum of twenty three thousand two hundred pounds to for you overseas know that candidates. So yeah, that's beyond. Uh -huh. So that's the only thing that can make the NHS maybe not give you your COS or um, withdraw your. Um, of her letter because i remember then you were really panicking you sent me message hey how far have they not sent me <laughs> what is going on <laughs> i kept saying calm down this is nhs your cos will come <laughs> okay now um after your your cos then it was time for you to um, apply for your visa and yeah. after that time that was when um, a, a law came up in march saying that care workers will no longer be allowed to come with their dependents so yeah. exactly but i kept telling people that if you are coming with the nhs you can come with your dependents please can you tell us was your wife's visa approved or not 
Ah, it was a pool. Uh -huh. <laughs> and both of you traveled yeah. together to UK, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the UK together. Because I kept telling yeah. people that um, those who are coming under the, um, the NHS, they, they will not be affected with this new rule of not being independent. Those who are going to be affected are those are coming um, who are coming with care homes, care agencies, those are the ones that can no longer come with their dependent. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, our next question is um okay, let's let's just ask about your life in UK. So um have you started work officially? How is it like? Do you like the NHS? Is it something that you really love? Yeah. Um, NHS, NHS is a job that gives you um, some form of um, insurance. Um, and one thing, again, they give you a career path. So um, in NHS, if you're actually um, coming as maybe a healthcare assistant or a support worker, and you decide to be maybe a nurse, I think um, they're... Um, speaking to your manager and you know trying to know what is around is something they 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 encourage career paths. So that's one interesting thing about them. And as I said, you know, insurance they gives you um stability to so say okay, yes, you have a job and this is something you can really rely on, um, you know, for a very very long time. Mm -hmm. So and about um settling in the UK, well, you know, when you change environments, a lot of factors are involved. Um the weather, um the food, um the currency exchange rate in particular, way of life, culture, you know, a lot of things for you to say yes, you are fully settled. So definitely all of this play a part and they have definitely took a toll on me but trust me as even as nigerian you will survive anywhere so that would just uh, make you at least it is still better from from um, from from where you're coming from from nigeria yeah stability is yeah it's very much very very much better okay so that's just it um, Okay, okay. So, um, I guess working with the NHS, you are allowed to also work um, part time, right? I think they call it bank shift or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, and yeah. and and yeah. you're also given the opportunity. Yes, and that's because you know you have to work a particular contracted hours with um, your employer. That's the NHS. So, and if you want to more, you want to be yeah, so you register with the bank. Okay. Um, bank is more or less like an agency of the NHS, whereby it will fit you into, um, you know, to get more shifts. So that is in addition to your contracted hour. So yes, it's very, 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 very possible. And that is at your own view, you know, at your own time. So that one, you are able to decide yourself. For the contracted one, you know, you are located to do that. You know, they are in charge of when you need to work and when you will not need to work. So that's the, that's the way it is. Oh, 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 okay, okay. So um, I forgot to ask something when we're talking about the um interview. You know, when you have an interview, uh, we usually send your job um, description. That's um that's the the NHS job description. So do you yeah, think yeah. questions really come out from that? Because I know that some questions do come out from there. That is why they usually um so. Uh, candidate to read the job description, but I don't know if that happened in your own case. Yeah, so the job they don't really they don't really go outside the job description. Okay. Though you don't expect every answers of what they will ask you or the questions to be on the job description. Um, you have to go deep because trust me, practical questions will not be in the job description. So, uh, but the just decision is a scope, is an outline of the, of how the interview is going to be because you actually you actually be asked question on your job role on what um, you applied for. So, if you are applying for a support worker, your questions will come around support worker. You understand? So, the job description is a very very good guideline or an outline on how to prepare for your interview. 
So I is is a very very useful one. Wow. So and you know, apart from the description, even when you look at the descriptions, um, you know, you also go online to make research, watch videos about okay, what are really the more job rules, or job descriptions of so 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 and so um um job types in which you've applied for. So it's a very key one. It's helped a lot. And it, also it um, lot. um read about the NHS, their values and all those things. Uh, job description, yeah, it covers their values, maybe where they have um their branches, okay. uh, what they stand for, whether they do community services, you know, the just restriction, okay. you know that carries a whole lot of things okay then your own job role is um healthcare support worker right i think i, I remember yours is um healthcare yes. support worker right hello yes i'm with you okay yes. okay okay healthcare support. okay okay but did they make it compulsory for you to buy a car or it's not compulsory because i know some um nhs is not compulsory and some is compulsory for you to get the car once you arrive in uk no compulsory no okay yours is not compulsory no 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 oh okay okay maybe it's well, those that work in the community um um units that they make it compulsory yeah, for because okay. i know some nhs they will, they will tell you to that it's compulsory that you get a car once you arrive in the uk uh, that means you are so lucky at least <laughs> you know that you have uh, enough time to to prepare yeah. yourself no. yeah. okay so um what advice do you have for those who are um applying to nhs england scotland what do you advise them to do um do you have any advice as regards interview as regards uh, not giving up what do you have to say about that um uh, okay before i give that advice i'll say when i got to the uk and when i started work i realized that a whole lot of people came in from Nigeria via the COS. Yeah. A whole, a, when I was in Nigeria, I funny enough, I don't even know a single person. So at the, at the beginning, uh, at the point of where I was waiting for the COS to come or interviews to pass, I was losing up and I don't believe maybe people really go through that. Route. But luckily, when I got to the UK, and I started work and you know, meeting people, this and that. I begin to see that I begin to know a lot of people that came in before me and even after me through the COS. These are Nigerians. So I am I can beat my chest and boldly say that um NHS job to COS is really true. And everybody interested or going through this route should just keep their hopes alive. Yes, trust me. Interviews will want to um, we want to discourage you, especially when you know you're not getting the results you get, or maybe you felt you've prepared a lot and you've not got you know you're just getting this disappointment from as results from interview. So I just advise just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And okay. with me, I've even testified to a lot of people in Nigeria, my friends, my colleagues, to say, please go through this route and do it. Yes, it may look tired, it may look long, but when it will click, it will mm. just click and, you know, you just yeah. not happy. So it's not that it's worth it and she just just patient and, you know, keep the hopes alive. That's just it. Okay. 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 Um, our final question. So, what do you have to say to Dama Consult? Um, what do you have to say to us for helping you with your application? Are you satisfied with our work, or you are not satisfied? Ah, uh, Dama Consult. In short, <laughs> I wish I did it something. <laughs> wow, Dama Consult has really been there. And um, one thing I appreciate so much about that government concert is that it's not, a it's not a scam. Yeah, it's not a scam. And anytime you need to speak to someone, you know, online, maybe you, you, you do business with some people and you're calling them, they are not reachable. No, 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 no. Dharma consult is always there to respond. 
when you are discouraged, when you are asking questions, even funny questions, they are ready to be there to respond. It's not a scam and no, that one comes out, in short, big thumbs up. You guys are really doing a very, very good job and it's actually a good consultative firm you know, for your travel plans and, you know, whatsoever thing they are doing. So, that one consult is top notch. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this interview. Thank you so much. Um, and I hope you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. And I hope you are also watching our YouTube videos. Even if we are yeah. we are true with you, that does not mean you should forget us or you forget <laughs> so, you forget that you are still part of us. True. I'm not even true with our course, but I still have a whole lot of business and deals to do with our consults. So okay. I'm, I'm a subscriber to the YouTube channel. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, thank you once again for attending this interview. I really, really appreciate even if you have delayed me for so long. <laughs> At least <laughs> you responded to me today. <laughs> thank you very, very much. Thank you. So um I'll be ending this um, live section now. Thank you so much for this. And my regards to your wife, my regards to your family. Um have a good night to rest. Or do you have anything to say to us?